All right, diving into organic chemistry here. We're going to spend a fair amount of time in this first chapter just looking at molecular structures. Uh, total review from GenChem of drawing Lewis structures. And to start this off, we've got to talk about the octet rule. So as a reminder, the octet rule is simply uh, that most atoms want to have eight electrons around them, whether that's through sharing electrons, covalent bonding, or through a transfer of electrons, ionic bonding, they want to have eight electrons. So if we take a look at chlorine down here, chlorine's got seven valence electrons. It's only the valence electrons that show up in a typical Lewis structure here. So what chlorine does is each of these chlorines is going to share one of those valence electrons here to form a bond. And this line represents two electrons. So, and then each of these chlorines can say, well, I have one, two, three, four, five, six of my own, and I'm sharing two, that's eight around me. And this chlorine says the same thing, I've got eight around me. And by sharing electrons, they both now have eight electrons around them. Now, the other way of accomplishing this would be through the transfer of electrons, typically from a metal to a non-metal, as is the case with sodium and chlorine here. So sodium's got one valence electron, chlorine's got seven, and sodium's just gonna send one of those, or his only valence electron here, over to chlorine. That's gonna leave chlorine with eight and a filled octet. And sodium here, we're not showing it here, he lost his only valence electron, but now he's got a filled octet for the previous shell, and now they both can claim having a filled octet as well. Now, not everybody's gonna follow the octet rule here, so some things you should know. If you are in the third row and lower, you can go over the octet rule. So atoms like sulfur and iodine and bromine and things of this sort, they can go over the octet rule. Now, they don't have to, but they can. Uh, and you'll see this more commonly in, in a general chemistry context, though, than in an organic. We will probably not see this much at all uh, in organic chemistry. Uh, but the idea is that you've got d orbitals that you can tap into starting in the third shell. Uh, second exception here, uh, those that go under the octet rule. So hydrogen only two, and we'll see this all the time. And then beryllium only four. So beryllium's only got two valence electrons. So if he shares with two different atoms, he'd have a total of four around him, total shared. Uh, and then boron aluminum only six. And we'll see aluminum every once in a while, and boron every once in a while. Probably won't see beryllium at all, truth be told, in organic chemistry. Um, so they will show up. They do go under the octet rule, just something to file away. So, and the last but not least, the third one, uh, molecules with odd numbers of electrons. And again, much easier to come up with a, an example that you're likely to see in a general chemistry context than organic chemistry. Um, but things like nitric oxide, NO, uh, has 11 electrons. Somebody's going to have to violate the octet rule with an odd number. But again, not likely an example we'll see in organic chemistry. So now we're going to get into drawing Lewis structures proper here. Uh, in any Lewis structure, it's just the valence electrons that are going to show up. So and as a reminder, here's a periodic table off to the right here. Uh, if you are in group number one, the alkali metals, you've got one valence electron. The alkali and earth metals have two valence electrons. Boron's column three, carbon's column four. Nitrogen's group or column five. Oxygen's column or group six. Fluorine's column, which is also called the halogen, seven. And then the noble gas is Eight. As a reminder, also, the halogens here with seven valence electrons are just one short of that filled octet, typically make one bond. Oxygen's column being two short of a filled octet, typically make two bonds. Nitrogen's column three short of a filled octet, three bonds. Carbon's column four electrons short of a filled octet, four bonds. And then boron, we might be like five bonds, but that would be an octet rule violation, not going to happen. Uh, with three valence electrons, only can make three bonds, sharing with three other atoms. And again, keep in mind, boron or aluminum like to go under the octet rule with just six around them rather than eight. So those are the kind of the normal number of bonds. Also notice hydrogen, that exception as well, only having one bond typically. Uh, those are the normal numbers. You will see some exceptions here and there. Uh, usually we'll find out that those often involve formal charges, uh, but typically those are the normal number of bonds here. So in this case, for carbon, we see carbon's got four valence electrons. Each of the hydrogens has one, and there's four of them for another four, for a grand total of eight valence electrons in our structure here. Uh, we're going to set up a skeleton with single bonds, and the central atom is the one that can make the most bonds. Here, carbon can make four, hydrogen only one, so carbon goes in the middle. So and our skeleton's going to have single bonds to all the hydrogen atoms on the outside. So in this case, that's rule number one. Rule number two here, fill the octets of the outside atoms with lone pairs of electrons. And so in this case, the hydrogen being exception only wants two and has two. All the hydrogens are full. Step two is not needed in this example. Step three, any remaining valence electrons go in the central atom. Well, again, we only have eight total valence electrons. We've used two, four, six, eight, two electrons per bond. So we've used all eight. We don't have any electrons left. Rule three is not needed. So, and finally, rule four, once all the electrons are used, form multiple bonds to the central atom if it's not full. So in carbon's case, he wants a filled octet, but he's got two, four, six, eight. He's got a filled octet, multiple bonds not needed. And this simply is the structure for CH4 methane.
So the second example we're going to cover here is ammonia, NH3. So in counting up the valence electrons, nitrogen's got five, and each of the hydrogens has one each, and there's three of them. And that's going to get us a total of eight valence electrons here as well. Uh, and in this case, nitrogen can make the most bonds, so nitrogen goes in the center. We'll set up a single bond skeleton to all the outside atoms, the hydrogens in this case. Uh, step one is done. Step two, fill up the octets of the outside atoms with lone pairs of electrons. And again, hydrogen is an exception. He only wants two, and they all have two, so they're full. Rule number two is not needed here. Rule number three, any remaining valence electrons go in the central atom. We've used two, four, six. We've got eight total, so we've got two left, and they definitely go in the central atom. So, and last but not least, since we worry about the central atom last, uh, if he's not full at this point and we're out of electrons, then we form multiple bonds. But in this case, nitrogen's got two, four, six, eight. He is full. So, and this is the correct Lewis structure for ammonia, NH3. So the next example we're going to cover here is H2CO. It turns out this is formaldehyde. If we look at the valence electrons, each of the hydrogens has one valence electron. Carbon's got four. Oxygen's got six. So two hydrogens is two plus the four plus the six. And we've got a total of 12 valence electrons here. In this case, each of the hydrogens make, typically make one bond, carbon four bonds, oxygen two bonds. Since carbon can make the most bonds, we'll stick him in the middle. And we'll set up a single bond skeleton to all the outside atoms. So that's step one done. So step two, fill up the octets of all the outside atoms with lone pairs of electrons. And hydrogen's an exception. They're full. They're happy with only two. But oxygen does want that filled octet, so we'll give him lone pairs until he's got eight. So that is step two done. Step three now, any remaining valence electrons go in the central atoms. We'll take an accounting. We've used two, four, six in bonds and two, four, six as lone pairs. We've used all 12 of our electrons. There are no remaining electrons to go on the carbon. So in step four is once all the electrons are used, we're gonna form multiple bonds to the central atom, carbon in this case, if it's not full. And in this case, carbon's got two, four, six, and indeed, he is not full. And the only atom, one of the outside atoms that's got electrons to share is the oxygen. So oxygen's going to take one of his lone pairs and share it with the carbon to form a double bond. So, and that is your correct Lewis structure here for formaldehyde. I'll just redraw it for clarity's sake. There is formaldehyde's Lewis structure. All right, so our last example for a Lewis structure here is going to be what's called acetic acid. Not a name you have to know just yet by any stretch of the imagination, uh, but if we count up the total number of valence electrons here, we got two carbons, four each, that's eight. Uh, four hydrons, one each, that's another four for 12, and then two oxygen, six each for another 12. And so we've got 24 total valence electrons here. Uh, it turns out this is going to be a little more complicated than the other Lewis structures. We don't have just one single central atom. So and we'll find out... Uh, as we start to try and draw these structures later on, we'll, we'll get some common motifs and you'll kind of get used to the pattern. But early on, you might have a little trial and error from the get-go, but hopefully you'll, you'll see the handful of common motifs that show up and start remembering them uh, before you, long before you get to your first exam. So if we look here, your first carbon atom here. So it's bonded to the three hydrogens that succeed it in the formula. And so we'll set up that part of the skeleton. So, and then we've got the next carbon down the chain. So, and then we see two oxygens and a hydrogen, and we might be tempted to just write them in a row going towards the hydrogen and we'll find out this is not going to work so keep in mind uh, we might remember that carbon likes to make four bonds typically and oxygen two so we'll see this is not going to work but we've set up this skeleton we'll do a little trial and error we'll rule it out in a second uh, but fill up the octet rule or sorry fill up the octets of the outside atoms with the lone pairs of electrons and who's the inside who's the outside is not so clear but let's fill up the most electronegative atoms first so we'll fill up the oxygens and so at this point, we've used up 22 electrons. We'd have two left to put on this carbon. The other carbon's already full. The hydrogens are definitely full. Uh, and in this case, we find that this carbon atom right here does not have a filled octet, and we've used all 24 electrons. The only atom next to them that might be able to share might be like this oxygen right here to put a double bond. But what you'd find is that we're going to end with a structure here where this carbon has three bonds and this oxygen has three bonds, neither of which is their typical number. And this is a structure that's just simply not going to work. So we tried to make it work. It's not going to work. We'll find out that those carbon and oxygen are going to have formal charges in a little bit. Um, and that's not your structure. So it turns out your skeleton is going to be a little different than we might have predicted. So again, first, the first carbon is bonded to the hydrogen succeeding it, a common pattern in writing formulas. Then we're bonded to the next carbon. So, and then it turns out there's a little bit of branching going on. We're bonded to two oxygens, and then one of the oxygens is bonded to the final hydrogen. So if we go from here and fill up all the outside atoms, so we'll fill up these oxygens 
give them their lone pairs first. They're the most electronegative atoms. They like the electrons the most. Uh, in this case, we've used 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. We've used all 24 electrons. So, but this carbon atom right here, again, is still does not have a filled octet. We've got two oxygens next to him, both of whom could share. And if you recall that oxygens typically like to make two bonds, and this one on the right already has two bonds, but this one up here only has one. And if we have him be the atom that does the sharing, he'd end up with two bonds as well. So, and if we redraw this one more time, for clarity's sake, we see we're able to get a structure here, one where everybody's got a filled octet who wanted one, but also where everybody's got the appropriate number of bonds, a typical number of bonds. Here, carbon's got four, this carbon's got four, each of the oxygens has two, and all the hydrogens have one. So, and this is indeed your proper Lewis structure here uh, for acetic acid.